Mr. Paul, good to see you after a year and a half. Joe, I haven't seen you in so long. It's been at least a year, right? Yeah, I quit smoking. I gained 40 pounds. You gained 40 pounds? Yeah, can't you hey, tell? Are you folks at home? Does it look like he's gained 40 pounds? Don't or, or... answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, smart guy, you know, we were way ahead of the curve in this political correctness thing. And but what is the opposite, by the way, of political correctness? Political incorrectness? How about... Nah. How about... A political correctness? Could be. I got I got it. What? And we could name our show after this. We'll call it Frankly Speaking. You mean telling the truth? Telling the truth. Frankly. That's unique. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Hey. And when and when can we speak frankly? Every Wednesday from seven to eight and Fridays from nine to ten. Are we gonna be live? Uh, not at first, but uh, shortly we'll thereafter. We'll evolve we into that? We will evolve and we'll be right back to the way it used to be with a with a new name. But basically, that same bold. Oh, attitude. not a new name. The the name. Yeah. And we're going to be on LCTV. That's the new name of the new outfit that's carrying this program. Well, actually, it's a same old, same old as far as personnel is concerned and quality, uh, but a little different setting. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of interesting stuff happening locally and certainly nationally. Let me give you a breaking news, since we're always ahead of the curve. I am going to, folks, listen to this, so you can tune in and learn something. Donald Trump's VP designee will be Senator John Huntsman, Jan Huntsman, Governor. from Utah. Governor. Governor. And Ambassador to China. Right. And I would say that we got to be careful not to put the cop before the horse. Let's get him nominated and let's see him beat um, Hillary Clinton. That's a cakewalk. Yeah, I know. Hillary Clinton's, you know, she's, she's got a primary ahead of her. She's Unlike a flawed candidate. You know what I find? Do you, do you know, I, I asked somebody today about mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton and it was amazing. I said, did you know that she's being investigated by the FBI? And? And I was talking to like five people and they all looked at me like, no. And they vote. No. And they you vote. Know, you know why? You know why that they have no idea? Why? Because they watch mainstream television. The mainstream television doesn't want to tell, what doesn't want to speak frankly about what's going on well, I'll with our speak frankly. 86% of them vote for Democratic candidates regardless. 86% of who? The mainstream media, journalists and yeah. reporters. Right. So you get a distorted view to start with, right. which is why Donald Trump rock and roll, right. because nobody trusts them anymore. And this is why we're going to be successful, folks, because we're going to tell you the truth That's as right. best we can. Yeah, right? that's right. And you know what? We got this interesting race happening here for Hadi Hayo Silva. The a sheriff. sheriff. The yeah. sheriff's race, yeah. Yeah. We've got a couple of Lynn guys going. I saw a sign for a guy, I think his name was Archer or something. It's, he's from outside of the city. So there's at least three candidates now. Really? But we got, we got um, Chief Coppinger, Kevin Coppinger, and um, the, for, the, the current superintendent up at the sheriff's office, that's uh, Michael Marks, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's Two Lynn guys. Yeah. Uh, two very well qualified guys. And they're going to replacing a Republican. Right. And so will, it, will there be a final? Is there a Republican running? Because these two folks are running in a Democratic primary, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so my guess is the, unless there's a, a, a dominant Republican out there, the race is for who wins the primary. Right? Fascinating. Yeah. You know, I found fascinating was uh, Council President uh, Kale uh, ran against Aya. He did. Hell of a campaign, by the way. Yeah, I, got it. I saw in the paper he got 379 votes. Way to go, Dan! Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh. But you know what? He won 379 to 10. To 10? To Did 10. you write your name in? <laughs> he's, uh, he's actually not in my district. I mean, I, I, was, couldn't, I, couldn't, even, I couldn't vote I saw for signs all over the place. He's knocking on doors, running against who knows what. But I, I, I don't do the, I'm not doing the math on it, but 379 out of 389 votes, that's like 98% or 99%. That's ridiculous number. Yeah. That's, a, that's a great, it's a great percentage. Not a very good turnout, but a great percentage. Also happening in the city, I ran across uh, Councilor Sia, energetic guy, works for the lottery. Yep. And yeah. he was instrumental in trying to get the Thurgood Marshall Middle School up and running uh, down. Yeah, wasn't that pretty exciting? I mean, they got the kids in there now. I, I was yeah, they psyched. Are. They, they got, a, got in a, ahead of schedule. I was talking to the mayor. I said, so you mean ahead of schedule and 
under budget? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Say, well, not quite Sounds under budget. Sounds like Donald Trump. Not quite under budget, but definitely ahead of schedule. Yeah, but, you know, this is when, when the wall goes up between Mexico and the United States, it's going to come in under budget. And on time. And on time. Right. Right. It's going to be 10 feet high? Th 20 feet high? 30 feet high? It, Who it, cares? Mexico's paying for it. <laughs> yeah, they are, aren't they? <laughs> and pesos or dollars? <laughs> I don't know which. Look. So, we're going to be talking about stuff like that, folks. Over and above, local, state, international, and simple stuff like, what's your favorite ice cream? Right. And, you know, um, I, I want to say this, uh, this, this I take from the bottom of my heart, I'm sure you feel the same way. When we went off the air uh, over a year ago, um, the outpouring of support, whether it was letters to the right. station, people we were seeing in the community, uh, everybody wanted to know why we were off, when we were coming back on. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a long, brutal story, but the fact is we're back and we're looking forward to it and we're hoping to get right back in that same rhythm that we had before. And I want to thank you. Paul quit smoking cigars and I Six quit weeks. smoking cigarettes in the meanwhile. Yep. Two good things. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing Mr. Polly, uh, and Mr. Polly, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, the other thing, talking about political correctness, have you ever noticed that there are a lot of SUVs that go for about 35, 40 grand, don't they, nowadays, these SUVs? I don't know. I mean, they're expensive yeah. commodities. Yeah. I find it to be an oxymoron, which is like giant shrimp. That's an oxymoron, right? Jumbo shrimp. Or jumbo shrimp. Right. Same difference. Thanks for correcting so, me. So what, <laughs> you don't have to ever worry about me correcting mm -hmm. you, right, Joe? I've always been good at that. Of course. <laughs> I mean, a standard operating procedure. So what, what's, the, what's the oxymoron about the SUVs? I don't get it. A Bernie Sanders sticker on an SUV. Oh, there you go. Bernie. Yeah, isn't it? Well, you know, he's a, what he's difference a socialist does it make? communist. With Bernie, we don't have to worry about a thing. Two things to be to remember about Bernie Sanders: if he becomes a president, yeah. everything will be free until we run out of other people's money. Which is a short order, by the way. <laughs> That's like the reservoir. Do you ever see the reservoir when it's empty? Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, scary. you have to open up the gates to get the water back in there, don't you? Right. Under Bernie Sanders, there are no gates. There's no flow of water coming back into the reservoir. Yeah. Once it's down. The party's over. That is frankly speaking. That's right. Frankly By speaking. the way, my taxes went up. My real estate taxes, Josh. Um, I just paid it. The, my residential taxes went up. My commercial taxes went down. How did that happen? Well, the commercial taxes have been going up crazy since 2009 because the residential market collapsed. And now that the residential market is coming back faster than the commercial rates, that there is a little bit of relief for the commercial. But Make no mistake about it, we've been paying our fair share. We have, haven't we? And we're going to be talking about all these things, frankly, with you, from taxes to fair share and the rest of it. And we have to wrap this up for now, Polly. Right. Yeah, just, and just remember, there's going to be lots of issues, whether it's local, state, or federal, uh, international. We want to talk about it all, and we want you here to listen to us. By the way, can they interact with us on the Internet? Or will we have that capacity? Will we have to find out? Well, I'm going to say this. They can tweet us, Facebook us, or whatever. We I guess that, we can. They can. We're so, going to be building that capacity. In fact, um, you know, the social media aspect of it, I think, is an important part of what we're going to do. I'd like to have the ability for people to, if they didn't want to call in, maybe they could text us or tweet us out or something beautiful. like that. If we had that capacity, it'd be pretty good. It's going to take a little while for us to get there, but I, I think we can get there. We got the best, we got the, the absolute best technical people anywhere in Massachusetts, right here. Oh, what a brown noser you are. Dave, Pedro. <laughs> that's being politically correct. Yes. Uh, on that note, I'm Joe, that's Paul, goodbye. <laughs>